This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good morning, aloha, and uh, ohayo gozaimasu. Uh, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. And uh, today my program is titled Japan's Judicial System. What's the verdict? And my guest is Mark Levin. He's a professor of law and the director of the Pacific Asian Legal Studies program at the William S. Richardson School of Law at the University of Hawaii. Professor Levin has been teaching Japanese law at the Richardson School of Law for over 20 years, covering a range of topics including history, constitutional law, legal education, legal careers, business transactions, and with a focus sometimes on the criminal justice system. Uh, it would be fair to say that Japan law is his profession and his passion. Professor Levin will discuss the present day Japan judicial system, how Japanese social values are reflected in its court system and judgments, prospects for change in comparisons with the US judicial system. Uh, Professor Levin, uh, welcome. Good to see you. Oh, oh, Ohio. Ohio gozaimasu. Ohio, Ohio. Uh, and uh, thank you for coming on today. I, I appreciate it. Uh, I want to learn a little bit about the judicial uh, system in Japan. And I mean, we're, we're both outsiders of Japan, but I think it's fair that we have opinions and we have opinions about our own ju judicial system. And exactly. we can talk about both and, mm -hmm. and be fair about both, I think. Uh, uh, w one thing I can tell you. Uh, about myself is in, in 1970 I went to Japan that was my first trip to Japan I was a undergraduate at a year in Japan program and even then I heard things about the judicial system in, in and the court system in Japan uh, one thing was it seemed kind of strange to me all defendants pled guilty they all confessed uh, the other thing was uh, judges went from law school the judges, and they never had any uh, practical or, or practice in, as, as lawyers. Right. And, and, and then Japanese don't go to court. We, we settle things out of court. And, and Japanese don't have juries. Now that was 1970, okay? That was, that was before you were born. <laughs> and, and I would like you to, to bring us up to date. T tell us a little bit about how you got involved in in uh, Japan and Japan law and tell us br bring us into the 21st century have things changed or what I said were those generalizations are they still true please so thanks for having me here this is a real treat and uh, the answers to those questions would be a full semester course <laughs> so <laughs> I'll try to get little bits and pieces okay. and tidbits that might be good for the audience and good for our conversation I first went to Japan in 1983. I graduated from law school and just was looking for something different. Um, I was born and raised on the East Coast of the US, and it wasn't so much that I had this long desire to be in Asia as it seemed interesting to go someplace else. And the good thing about Japan was that there would be jobs available. So I went right after law school I spent uh, my days working in a law firm and my evenings teaching English. And I was there for a year. And it was that point in time that launched me into a career that I didn't know was coming, mm -hmm. but has been happening ever since. Um, and I had much of that same reaction as you. This, the, the law, the courts, the, these things were different. And, um, and it was fascinating to me. And that explains why my career has gone where it is, is trying to unravel those fascinations. Um, I think the first one, the, the starting point needs to be the fact that Japan's legal system in the late 1800s, when they modernized, uh, adopted primarily French and German models. So actually, the biggest difference between the United States and Japan, if you're making mm. that comparison, isn't 
the United States and Japan. It's the fact that the US legal system, including Hawaii's, is based on the Anglo-American system, what we know as the common law system. Um, and Japan's is primarily, it's somewhat hybrid, but primarily based on the French and German system, also known as the continental legal tradition or the civil law tradition. Um, and so it took me a long time to learn that. I didn't know that right off the bat. I just was like you. Oh, Japan's different. Look at these things. So we can, for example, talk about the fact that judges become judges straight from law school. Well, that's very common throughout continental Europe. Oh, okay. And uh, judges are somewhat different. They're meant to be more restrained, uh, more bureaucratic. Uh, they're not supposed to create law. There's no tradition of judge-made law. Um, their job is to interpret and apply the laws that the legislature creates. Like the statutes. Like the statutes. Without that separate piece that we know of as the common law. So they don't go off on their own uh, saying, well, this is the way it should be. They, they say, this is the way it is, I guess. Well, <laughs> you know, the shoulds and what they do sometimes vary <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> okay. But the simple point of it is, the basic <clears throat> principles is, those ju the judges are assigned to not create law, to the legislature. It's the legislature's job. Okay. So judges, it's a career. You uh, his, Traditionally, uh, you might study law. You might study law as an undergraduate major, which again is not mm. uh, a US model. And then uh, you would apply for the bar exam. For a long time, one took the bar exam, passed to go through a training institute of a couple years, and then select your career. You would become a judge, a lawyer, or a prosecutor. And probably for the next 10 or 15 years or longer, you would be doing one of those. Japan changed a little bit and now has somewhat like American style law schools. So you might still study law in college, but then you apply to a law school, um, go to law school and study for two years, then take the qualifying exam. And if you pass, you would again go to the training institute. And still though, um, on the far side of the training institute, make a choice. I'm going to be a lawyer, I'm going to be a judge, I'm going to be a prosecutor. And it's not a one-sided choice, um, somewhat like the fraternities and sororities on the college campus. Um, the prosecutors and the judges are at the training institute saying, hey, you should be a judge. Oh. Thinking about a judicial career? We'd love to have you. Let's talk. I see. Um, Re so recruitment. There's a recruitment. Oh, and okay. the training institute is run by the Supreme Court of Japan. So they have a certain advantage I see. They, in carrying out that rush process. They can process. see who it is. Well, I mean, I, I just do law firms go to these things too and try to get people to become lawyers, or does that happen? While one is at the training institute, yeah. um, the teaching model alternates from being at the institute in coursework, which is fairly pragmatic, because remember, people have already studied law before right. getting there. Um, and placements. And mm -hmm. one has, uh, in the course, it's now a year-long program, one has three placements in a lawyer's office, in a prosecutor's office, and at the courts. I see. Um, but meanwhile, if, if one's interested, one can do one's own interviewing and uh, the, the law firms are out looking at people. Okay. But that explains why someone would you, would, go, you can go into a courtroom and see a 25-year-old judge. Hmm. Um, I remember being in courtroom in Tokyo, and it was a bail hearing. So there were three young defendants, or young suspects. Um, they'd been arrested, they were seeking release on bail, and they were all in their, say, mid-twenties. And the judge was up there, and is technically an assistant judge, but can handle these bail proceedings, in his mid-twenties. And the prosecutor was a woman, um, and she was in her mid-20s, mm. and I thought, this just looks like moot court in my law school. <laughs> <laughs> but it was real. Yeah. It was very real for the suspects wow. and their lawyers. Yeah. So, um, yeah, one starts as a judge straight out of the institute and carries on that career. And there's virtually no other entry point into being a judge. Yeah. 
that. And that's your, basically your lifetime job. One makes that one's career. Mm. The only, there's tiny exceptions, and then the big exception is the Supreme Court of Japan mixes career judges with others. Mm. So the, there's 15 members of the Japanese Supreme Court, and that would include people who are uh, former diplomats, former government officials, former prosecutors, former lawyers, former academics. Um, and it's kind of a quota system. So if an academic is leaving the court, the position's probably going to be filled by an academic. Former prosecutors leaving the Supreme Court, it's going to be filled by a former prosecutor. It's kind of a quota system at the Supreme Court. So they draw from all of the society of attorneys and judges attorneys and prosecutors and, to become the Supreme Court. That's right. right. And then adding in non-attorneys of, for example, former diplomats, former oh. senior government officials, and academics who are ordinarily not attorneys. Wow. Really, on the Supreme Court. Yeah. But still high-level professionals. It's mm -hmm. not, uh, they don't go out into the business community, they don't go out into the broader public hmm. for the Supreme Court even if there are extremely distinguished people. Um, and among the academics, the academics would be legal academics. You wouldn't have a sociologist selected. Okay, uh, now let's go back and talk about that example. You talked about the, 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 the young defendants and the young judge and the young prosecutor. And uh, what is the criminal uh, law system like there? Uh, you, you know, I, 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 like, like I said, I, I heard that, hey, don't even bother to have a trial. Plead guilty is what it is in Japan, and, and there's no jury a anyway. So you can't, in, in America, where we think maybe we go in front of a jury in, of our peers, uh, where they, they hear us talk and maybe there's a not guilty verdict because of that uh, right. life experience. What, what's it like in Japan? Um, first, the conviction rate is beyond imagination. It is 99 point, mm. I think, 97. Um, wow. And um, my colleague at the University of Hawaii has studied this. He's, he's in the sociology department, David Johnson, um, and others have looked at it, my professor John Haley, with the idea that the real winnowing of what should be done in this case is done with it by the prosecutor. So it's as if the society decided to trust the prosecutors uh, to do this and to do it right. And it, I think it's fair to say that in the vast majority of the cases, they probably are doing it right. What's scary is that there probably are some cases where they're not. Mm -hmm. Now, we have juries. We have a criminal justice system. We have cases where we're probably not doing it right. Um, I think both uh, criminal justice systems have problems, so I don't want to be misstating it. Right. But Japan in 2009 um, began uh, lay participation in major criminal cases. Okay. Um, first thing is you can't call it a jury. They are lay judges. Okay. Um, so if you go into the courtroom, you'd look up and, and see behind the proceedings of the defendant and the prosecutor and the police and the witness, the bench and sitting, there are nine seats at the bench. Mm -hmm. And the three center seats are robed judges. And on the right side and on the left side are six ordinary citizens in ordinary street clothes. And are, are, are they just called in or how are they? They are just called in. Okay. But there's reasons why we don't call them jurors. <laughs> First of all, um, they, um, they deliberate with the judges. So remember, yeah. Yeah. we in the US, we keep the judges out of the room when the jury's deliberating. Right. The jurors are, think of 12 angry men. Yeah, um, right? yeah. The jurors are on their own in there. Um, these lay judges are deliberating with the jurors. Uh, they can ask questions. So they are lay judges. Uh, for that trial. Mm. Um, this system is only used in cases with severe charges. Um, so ordinary uh, cases, are, they're not used, but still thousands of cases right now since 2009 have lay judges. When I was in Japan 
um, last month I actually went to the courthouse and observed some lay judge trials. And these are just or ordinary uh, Japanese citizens? Ordinary Japanese citizens. And they're, they're called in and they have any special training? or They're called in precisely the same way that our jurors are called mm -hmm. in. Um, but there are other differences. Um, they, for example, uh, weigh sentencing. Um, so our jurors, aside from death penalty cases in the United States, do not uh, uh, determine sentencing. Sentencing is done only by, by judge. judges. Yeah. Um, and then you've got nine folks and this complicated human formula of three professional judges and six lay people. Um, and you need a majority, it's not unanimous, you need a majority to convict, including at least one professional judge. And, and I want to ask about the, uh, how they work together after our break. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> All right. So we'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Sounds great. All right. Judd Rawlson here, folks, your host on Where the Drone Leads, our weekly show at noon on Thursdays here on Think Tech, where we talk about drones, anything you, to do about drones, drones, remotely piloted aircraft, unmanned air crystals, whatever you want to call them, emerging into Hawaii's economy, educational framework, and our public life. We talk about things associated with the use, the misuse, uh, technology, engineering, legislation, with the local experts as well as people from across the country. Please join us noon on Thursdays and catch the latest on what's taking place in the world of drones that might affect you. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. We are back with Law Across the Sea. My guest, Professor Mark Levin, University of Hawaii Law School. And we are talking about the Japan judicial system and just getting a brief overview of it and kind of differences and idiosyncrasies about it. And we were talking about the lay juror system, Mark, and uh, how did the judges and the lay jurors interact together? I mean, I would, if I was a, a juror, I might feel intimidated to have three judges on the panel. Right. Um, so again, they're not jurors, they're lay judges. All right. And that's a difference, right? That's mm -hmm. a very big difference. They are uh, ostensibly equal with the only difference being that the, uh, the, a, a single professional judge's vote is needed to convict. Um, but so, so all of them could agree, but if a judge, if, if one judge didn't agree, then there's no conviction. Right, but, oh. con but, but all judges could decide to convict, and if all the lay judges, all the professionals could just choose to convict, and if, all the, if there's only three votes there, so they don't have a majority, they need to pull in some of the lay judges uh, to get a conviction, otherwise it's an acquittal. So they, can, um, they, they need five. They need five. Five of nine, that's right. Yeah. So they would need to persuade at least two of the lay judges for okay. conviction. The, the, the interactions um, seem to be going well. Lay judges, I, I, many people were concerned, myself among them. Um, some people said Japanese people won't speak out. I know Japanese people will speak out. I know a lot of Japanese people who are perfectly comfortable speaking out to me. Um, so th I put that stereotype aside. But I was worried about whether or not the judges um, would, sort of the hierarchy would be such that they might impose their decisions. Right. And surveys have shown lay judges um, coming out with a fairly high degree of satisfaction. Um, the system began, I think it was May 2009, um, and um, my other concern... Well, just let me interrupt, because, you know, that makes me think that maybe that's a cultural thing, too. As I have an obligation to do a good job. And I've taken this. I'm not going to just do what somebody tells me. I am right. going to do a good job. Right. Well, 
So do our jurors. I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, was a, I was a law clerk in, in federal court for two years and working very closely with jurors, and I have boundless appreciation for what American jurors do as well. Okay. Um, but no, they do take their roles very seriously, and keep in mind that their cases are invariably serious cases, right. including death penalty cases. Um, I was also troubled uh, by the degree of uh, confidentiality imposed upon the lay judges, and I actually wrote about that and published an article. Um, Taiwan last month announced that they are going to uh, create a system somewhat like Japan, also lay judges. Korea, around the time that Japan created its lay judge system, created a jury system. Huh. So Korea has a jury system. Um, more, more like the American. More like the American, where the judges okay. are not in the room while the juries are deliberating. And, and the lay judge, judge uh, system is based on what? Uh, where, what was the background it's, for that? It's bent off of a German model. So Germany has lay judges, uh, but lay judges in Germany serve for a term and can hear multiple cases. So that's why I say it's bent off the German model in the sense that, like our jurors, uh, a lay judge will serve in only one case. Okay. So, excuse me, yeah. That's okay. Go, go on. Um, so, Taiwan, I just read, is uh, allowing a little more looseness for lay judges to speak about their experience after the case is done. Mm. And I believe that that's important. That's a downside. But I will say that the, the reports on the lay judge system uh, have been good. There still are problems with the Japanese criminal justice system. Um, the interrogation system is very oppressive. By the police? By the police and the prosecutors. Oh, the prosecutors involved in that too? They, at different stages. I see. But um, the lack of access to lawyers, the, abil the ability of police and prosecutors to question uh, suspects without lawyers present. Um, and to hold them in detention for days at a time, mm. or weeks or months at a time in certain cases. Um, with, um, and in, in Japan, one has a right to main, remain silent. One does not have a right to refuse questioning. So that's... How about a, a right to counsel? One has a right to counsel. Um, it was after indictment. I think it has been moved up. Um, now there's lawyers available but the lawyer isn't necessarily going to be there while you're being interrogated. Oh. So you might have uh, an hour with a lawyer who briefs you as to what you should do, then you're back in your detention cell, and the police will come and take you to an interrogation room and interrogate you without a lawyer mm. present. So Japan still has problems with the system, but I will say that I think the lay judge system uh, seems to be working well. It also upped the judiciary's game. So judges involved with the public have to be, uh, cannot be aloof, right? They have to create a, 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 a face and a capacity to interact. It changed the court proceedings so that there is more plain language used. Um, so the, it's not just the decision making where there's been a positive benefit. I think there have been many places where the system has brought positive sort benefits. Sort of more, more open for the society. And more open. So now judges, are, so Japan's judges the, off of the civil law tradition had been very isolated from the society. Mm. You'd become a judge, you'd live in your, you'd uh, rotate around the country, you'd have almost no contact with people aside from your family mm. outside the judiciary. Mm -hmm. um, well, now you do. Now you're you know, spending time meeting people. Um, it, that has changed. Um, and so I think it has made a difference. You, you know, so judges on the bench now know when they're in the courtroom, there's citizens watching what they do. Right? There's six citizens on so, so there. So they're going to take that into account. They will definitely take right, that into so account. A little more social uh, o oversight, if you will. Social oversight. So the mm -hmm. court proceeding... Now, I think the data shows that conviction rates haven't changed mm. substantially. Um, there is a problem, I think, that it only takes a majority to get a death penalty verdict in Japan. So there is, 
uh, death penalty cases, I, I think, and David Johnson, my colleague, has written about this uh, more, that those ought to have some heightened level. Um, but you now have ordinary people in the room watching, participating, um, keeping the system more, uh, uh, presumably keeping the system functioning with a watchful eye. And, and that's uh, a, a good social change and, and movement. And, and, you know, just going back to my uh, college days, they also, I also heard that, well, Japanese don't go to civil court so much. And, and is that true, or is that still the way it is? Or? That's changed as well. Uh, part of it is when you're in college in 1970, uh, there were few judges and few courtrooms mm. um, and few lawyers. So part of the reason one wouldn't go to court is one wouldn't necessarily be able to get to court easily. <laughs> Japanese people didn't know lawyers. They didn't know how to find a lawyer. Um, in the 1930s, going way back, when the, actually the per capita rate of lawyers and judges was much higher, Japanese people were suing. Huh. So, so that's a good thing, isn't it? To have more lawyers. All well, right. And <laughs> since 2000, Japan has increased the number of lawyers substantially. They've also loosened things. So now you can ride a train in Japan, look up at the billboards, and there's an advertisement for a lawyer. Okay. So think how much that changes something. If an ordinary person is having some manner where they feel like they need a legal consultation in 1970 or even 1995, they wouldn't know what to do. They might go to a government office and get some bureaucrats' advice about yeah. the issue. But now they're riding the train every day and they look up and there's that little banner that says, call us, free consultation. And so, they'll call. So, so I guess, you know, there's good and bad about having lawyers, maybe. Uh, and, and that is, the, the good thing is there's more opportunity for consultation and advice. But some people are going to say, well, there's going to be more, more litigation. Well, litigation is aiming towards justice. Mm. And um, okay. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of having lawyers that, uh, in terms of making systems work well, uh, holding uh, government officials accountable, um, holding businesses accountable. The other change that I would say that sort of indicates this is now businesses in Japan, mega businesses, are using the American system of in-house counsel more. Uh -huh. So as to, I mean, Japan's been roiled with these, these scandals of mm. businesses sort of lying and cheating very unfortunately. Well, part of it is the compliance has been loose. So bringing in in-house counsel for compliance. You now see giant mega businesses suing each other, whereas there might have been some fixer before. Um, and so I think what it means is it's a system where law is perhaps setting the rules, uh, and one hopes setting it well. And making justice available for everybody in society, and that's, a, that's what we're here for. That's, so, that is what it is here for. Professor, thank you so much for being my guest today, and uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Aloha. Aloha.